Hey, today we're talking about focusing on yourself and using self-improvement as a guide. So I know we often think we should be working on ourselves, but one of the biggest barriers of getting into it is actually just knowing where to start. So we're gonna use this great exercise called the Wheel of Life. And what this does, it helps you consider the key areas of your life. And then what that does, it shows you which ones are potentially out of balance and that's a great starting point to see which areas could you focus a bit more attention into. And then we're gonna do one more exercise called a past audit, which is about seeing whether there are any parts of your past which are really impacting your present. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna combine the two by looking at any of the areas that you're potentially struggling in or any areas that you're particularly maybe overachieving in. And then we're gonna compare that with a past audit and see are there any things from your past that are getting in the way of you actually improving in those areas or that are making you potentially overachieve? So welcome to The Power of Helping. My name's Ruben Wax. I'm a trainee counsellor and I'm passionate about improving people's lives so they can be in a better place to empower the people around them. So why is self-improvement so important? Well, on the one hand, when it comes to helping others, it's absolutely crucial that you're in a good place yourself. Otherwise, you're gonna be wrapped up in your own issues at the time. As Tony Robbins says, one essential of helping others is to consistently work on yourself. And on the other hand, self-improvement is absolutely essential for our own happiness in the long run. I mean, if you look 10 years down the line and you imagine what your ideal life would look like, Self-improvement is asking yourself how are you gonna get there and then closing that gap between where you are now and where you want to be. But another trap that we can quite easily fall into is putting a lot of energy and focus into the areas that we're really good at already. So let's say that's your career or your partnership, but at the same time you might be forgetting your health a little bit or let's say you're really good at your finances but you're not so good at having fun or vice versa. So I really recommend getting a piece of paper and a pen and either doing the exercise now or coming back to it at the end of the video. Okay, so here you can see the wheel of life. What you wanna do is draw a circle and then draw four lines through it so that you basically have eight sections. And then on the outside, write the key areas of your life for each different section. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna mark from zero to 10, from the middle to the outside. Then take some time to consider each different area and draw a line through each of those at a particular number that you feel best fits how you're doing in that area right now. So let's say if your finances have taken a hit at the moment, then maybe you wanna put a three or a four through that. But if let's say your friendships has really boosted in this time, then you can maybe put a seven or an eight through that. Then when you finish, you should end up with something similar-ish to this. And what you can do then is take a step back and clearly visualize how you're getting on in your life at the moment and potentially if there's any areas which could use a little bit more attention. It could be really beneficial once you've done the wheel of life to make a list of all the different sections as well and put what number you got for each of them and then leave a space under each one so you can write some notes on how you're gonna improve those different areas. But let me know in the comments below which areas you're most struggling with at the moment and I'll potentially be able to give some extra tips down in the comments. So there are loads of great ways out there that you can improve the different aspects of your life. In this time right now, for all of us, there's gonna be particular ones that have definitely taken a bit of a hit. But one area that can really be worked on in these times is personal growth. Now, personal growth incorporates self-improvement and looking into the past and developing yourself in those ways, but it also incorporates growing mentally and emotionally. So a great place to start would be to meditate every day. And next week, I'm actually bringing a video out on beginning meditation. So when that's out, I'll link to it in the description below, and I'll also put it in the cards just up there. And so mentally, you could read more books on self-improvement and understanding why we are the way we are. And another great tool for personal growth is journaling, free writing in a journal. What that can do is it can get all the thoughts out of your mind and it can actually help you focus on what's going on in your life right now. Another great area of your life that you can improve in these times is your health. And that incorporates your mental health and your physical health and your emotional health. One thing that's properly changed the game for me recently is getting into yoga. And there's so many videos online of 10 minute yoga sessions. It's such a great way of getting your body moving. Movement is anti-inflammatory. So what it actually does, it reduces the amount of stress in your body as well. And so doing that every single day will really have a massive impact on both your physical and also your mental health. 
So another thing that you can actually do in this time is reduce the amount that you're actually on social media. Now, it might seem a bit of an odd one, but reducing the amount that we end up unconsciously comparing ourselves to others, it can do wonders for our mental health and just for our general happiness. And that's because our happiness is actually made up of our expectations of life and then what our reality is. So the more that you can reduce the amount that you compare your life to others on social media, the more that you'll start to feel content in the present with what your situation is right now. So now we're onto the past audit. This is a great exercise from Oliver James, the psychologist. And what this exercise is doing is asking yourself, what conversation do you have in your head about your life and about yourself? So as I go through these, ask yourself, has this part played a massive part in me becoming who I am and what I'm like today? Now these five different areas will be really different for everyone, but write the headers down as we go along and then we're gonna use that to go back to our wheel of life and see how our past is impacting our present. So the first question to ask yourself is, did gender play a big role in your childhood? Now for everyone, these experiences will be different. So maybe you were a guy and you felt when you were younger that you had to be the man of the house. Or for example, you were a girl and maybe you had a bit of a rivalry with your mum because maybe you got opportunities that she didn't when she was younger. So next is birth order. I'm a middle child and that played a massive part in my childhood. I always felt like I wasn't achieving as much as my older brother, but then my younger brother got loads of attention because he had particular needs growing up. So I definitely had an element of, I was pretty desperate to be seen and heard growing up. And that's definitely played a big part in who I am today. So the next we're gonna go on to is achievement. Did your parents potentially have incredibly high expectations of you? Or did they not bother too much in what you were doing? And did that play a big part in who you were growing up and maybe who you are now? Now, we're gonna go on to what Oliver James calls the ugly duckling. So did you or any of your siblings have an almost unwanted status in your family? And if so, how did that impact your family dynamic or yourself? And so now we come to the last one, which is seeing if there's any clear ways that your past impacts your present right now. It's about asking yourself, are there any situations where you act or react slightly differently or more extremely than you would normally thinking is this potentially how I would have maybe acted or reacted as a child for me the main thing I've worked on for the last few years is my fear of confrontation that comes from me growing up but then it plays a big part in my life now where let's say I struggle to get negative feedback from a boss or something of that sort so understanding where those negative feelings come from can really help as Michael Jacobs says, feelings become more tolerable the more we know why we're experiencing them. Now, when you fill out these areas of your upbringing, then compare that with the wheel of life and think in any of the areas where you're potentially struggling, is there a part of your past that's actually holding you back from doing really well in those areas? Or are there any areas where you're smashing it so hard that it's actually taking away from some of the other areas? And is that coming from an expectation that people had on you growing up? So to summarize, using this tool, the wheel of life, really helps you focus down on the areas that could really use improving. Then making a self-improvement plan of the different areas that you'd really like to focus on, it's gonna benefit you in so many ways. It's gonna get you into a positive cycle where you start to feel better in one thing and that rolls over so you feel you could do better in another and then you feel more healthy and you feel more mentally strong and it will just keep growing and growing until you have this positive cycle that you're going around. And then once you're doing that, Taking the time to look into your past and seeing how it's impacting your present it can be incredibly beneficial for you. So if you've got some value from this video, then please consider hitting the like, the subscribe button below, and please leave a comment below to say what you found most valuable in this video. And I look forward to seeing you soon.